Regular attacks on targets in Russia affect the general mood of Russians. However, one should not hope that the Russian population will complain about something flying at them and express dissatisfaction with the policies of Vladimir Putin. Valery Glochok, head of the Veza Public Analysis Center of Ukraine, told Channel 24 about this. He added that the Russians will not go against the dictator solely because of the Ukrainian UAV attacks. Until the West changes its policy towards Russia and the OPEC countries that determine the level of oil prices, then it is too early to talk about the transformation of processes in the territory of the aggressor country, noted the head of the Veza Public Analysis Center. For riots to occur in Russia, a number of other factors must form that will stimulate the Russian population to express their discontent and ultimately raise riots. In particular, these are economic factors. Of course, the attacks on Russia highlights this problem. International pressure and perhaps most importantly, the limitation of Russia's ability to earn money on international markets. After all, as long as Russia trades oil and receives billions in revenue from the budget, it will be able to maintain its fortune, said Klochok. The international factor is of key importance in the indignation of the Russian population. Today, despite the fact that the Russian economy is overheated, it still gives opportunities for a large number of the population to receive high incomes. Of course, the poverty level in Russia is extremely high, more than 60%. However, even social tension and poverty in the long term are unlikely to create favorable conditions for Russian riots to arise and reach a scale where Russians will go and demolish the Kremlin noted Klotok. Now in Russia, completely different processes are taking place. This is rather a provocation of the Russian elites to share power, but politicians in Russia are still capable of reaching agreements, sharing money and ensuring the stability of the regime that serves a large number of the population. They will be a restraining factor for Russians who live in poverty and see these explosions. By the way, according to Ukrainian intelligence, despite the problem that Russians are facing, they are not ready to rebel against Vladimir Putin. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday launched a massive exercise of the country's nuclear forces featuring practice missile launches as he continued to flex the country's nuclear muscle amid spiraling tensions with the West over Ukraine. Speaking in a video call with military leaders, Putin said that the drills will simulate top officials' action in using nuclear weapons and include practice launches of nuclear-capable ballistic and cruise missiles. Putin who has repeatedly brandished the nuclear sword as he seeks to deter the West from ramping up support for Ukraine, emphasized on Tuesday that Russia's nuclear arsenal remains a reliable guarantor of the country's sovereignty and security. Taking into account growing geopolitical tensions and emerging new threats and risks, it's important for us to have modern strategic forces that are always ready for combat, he said, reaffirming that Russia sees nuclear weapons use as the ultimate extreme measure of ensuring its security. Putin noted that Moscow will continue to modernize its nuclear forces, deploying new missiles that have a higher precision, quicker launch times and increased capabilities to overcome missile defenses. Last month, the Russian leader warned the US and NATO allies that allowing Ukraine to use Western-supplied longer-range weapons for strikes deep inside Russia would put NATO at war with his country. He reinforced the message by announcing a new version of the nuclear doctrine that considers a conventional attack on Russia by a non-nuclear nation that is supported by a nuclear power to be a joint attack on his country, a clear warning to the US and other allies of Kiev. Putin also declared the revised document envisages possible nuclear weapons use in case of a massive air attack, holding the door open to a potential nuclear response to any aerial assault, an ambiguity intended to deter the West. Сегодня мы проводим очередную тренировку стратегических сил сдерживания. Отработаем действия должностных лиц по управлению применением ядерного оружия в практическими пусками баллистических и крылатых ракет. Сразу отмечу, что Россия подтверждает свою принципиальную позицию о том, что использование ядерного оружия является крайней исключительной мерой обеспечения безопасности государства. Вместе с тем, мы 
хорошо понимаем, что именно ядерная триада продолжает оставаться надежным гарантом суверенитета и безопасности нашей страны, позволяет решать задачи стратегического сдерживания, а также поддерживать ядерный паритет и баланс сил в мире как объективные факторы глобальной стабильности. Учитывая рост геополитической напряженности, появление новых внешних угроз и рисков, важно иметь современные и постоянно готовые к боевому применению стратегические силы. Будем и дальше совершенствовать все их компоненты. Ресурсы для этого имеются. Подчеркну, мы не собираемся втягиваться в новую гонку вооружений, однако будем поддерживать ядерные силы на уровне необходимой достаточности. В текущем году их оснащенность современными образцами вооружения достигла порядка 94%. В соответствии с госпрограммой вооружения будем планомерно переводить РВСН на новые ракетные комплексы стационарного и мобильного базирования, которые по сравнению с предыдущими поколениями обладают более высокой точностью, сокращенным временем подготовки к пуску. И что крайне важно – повышенными возможностями по преодолению систем противоракетной обороны. Кроме того, продолжается ввод в состав военно-морского флота новейших атомных подводных крейсеров, а также модернизация стратегических бомбардировщиков дальней авиации. Все это необходимо для эффективной защиты России и нашей